This video was sponsored by Enhance, Elbilmec, a bit of planner, Camp Power, and Bill Componente. Yo, what's up? In this video, I'm gonna show you guys how fast or slow the Tesla Model Y Uniper is charging. Okay, you know, Tesla, they've been improving the efficiency over time. It becomes better and better. Every time they make a new facelift or model, whatever, you know, there's always uh, a decrease in drug coefficient. They might improve some cooling or heating or an octa valve. Uh, but uh, when it comes to charging, it seems like Tesla has stagnated. It seems like for the past four or five years, they have not improved the charging speed at all. So we're going to be comparing against an x -Bank and also uh, a Ford Explorer, Explorer, but it's uh, in, the, in the MBB platform, the 84 kilowatt hour MBB cars, you know. So we're going to roll the tape now. See that um, yeah, I found the, X -G, uh, the G9, x -Bank G9, as the best I could find. But I mean, nowadays, x -Bank even charges at 550 kilowatt. The Chinese, they are just yeah, going so schnell. But okay, Model Y hit over 200 kilowatt initially. When you see Explorer, okay, it cannot hit 200 plus kilowatt, uh, but it has a flatter curve. And then also include a Model Y from 2021, and then also a 2022 model. Um, or I mean recorded in 2022 and actually the old recording seems to be faster the 2022 seems to be a little faster than the, the Juniper even well okay back to the G9 you see the G9 is leading big time it's already at 40% all the others are only at 30 something percent Man, the Chinese, and like, um, again, let me remind you that this is not the fastest x -Bang or Chinese car out there. Uh, you know, let's not forget the, the Seeker 7X, I haven't tested it yet, but G9 is already at 50%. But okay, back to the Tesla then. We see that okay, Tesla was fast initially, but then it goes slower. But actually that lead it had in the beginning, uh, it took a while until the Explorer caught it, but you know, so, at 50%, yeah, um, Explorer is ahead of Model Y Uniper, but because Uniper is more efficient, then that's why Tesla is still winning. So actually, it means that the, the 250 kilowatt charging that was introduced in 2021-22, roughly, uh, was quite big. Actually, they already had uh, 250 kilowatt from 2019 when they bought the, the Tesla Model 3 Performance, but that battery was the Panasonic battery. It was charging so schnell compared to the LG batteries now yeah the, the the model y is all of them here they are the lg battery but okay back to the uh, test or the the race anyway the g9 is about to hit 80 percent and look at the teslas they're only at around 60 percent you see just put things in perspective how slow teslas are charging uh, actually explore is on a good second right now wow 70 percent huh very nice and flat curve compared to the teslas on the bottom they're just like uh slow poking okay we charge even slow but here you can see that uh the 2022 recording was faster than the 25 huh what the heck is going on there uh, i don't know but um there was a little upgrade yes from um, from 2021 to 2022 there was an upgrade in speed uh, still, still the same LG battery, but uh, pretty much from 2022 until 25, there is no upgrade at all. Maybe even a slight degrade yeah, or downgrade. But as we speak now, G9 is about to hit 90%. This is amazingly fast. Holy macaroni. And that was 27 minutes. Nowadays, the x are charging so much faster. But okay, there you go. x bank wins. Yes. Uh, and then the Teslas are, uh, they, they haven't hit, even hit 90%. You know, this is going to be total humiliation now. The G9 is going to go for 100% by the time the Teslas hit 90%. Yeah, how about that? Actually, Ex Explorer is about to hit 90% also. Wow. A good second place on the Explorer or the MEB car. Yeah, I could just say MEB here, but you know, did they include one of the Volkswagen ID4 or. Not sure about the Audi Q6, but actually some of them may be like the, uh, what's again, the Cupra Tavascon has only 135 kilowatt charging. It's actually kind of slow. Okay, and then, right, okay, Explorer already hit 90%. The Tesla hasn't even hit 90%, but I mean, who cares about 90%, right? Because uh, on the real world, you don't need charge to 60, 70%. Actually, when you have this... Uh, 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 trip planners on navigation nowadays. No, one, none of them uh, suggest that you charge at 90%. They usually suggest to charge only 60-70% because that's where it goes the fastest. Anyway, that's what I do in my 1,000 kilometer challenges. Wait a minute. I thought G9, which is 800 volt, wonderful, overhyped architecture, is about to hit 90% first. And 99, I mean 100% first. But it seems like the Explorer is actually going to hit 100% first. And Explorer is 400 volt architecture. But there. The 2022 Model Y hit 90%. Wow, about time. 
the slow clap for Tesla. Oh, look at that. Explorer hit 100% first. Wow. And then G9 hits 100%. Okay, second. Now we're just going to watch, watch the paint dry because, uh, yeah, you guys see now that the 2022 charges actually faster than the 25. What the heck is going on here? Huh? I, I don't know, but okay, well, now you guys have seen it. And then the 2021 was even slower, yeah. So it was like, okay, slight upgrade and then degrade or downgrade. And here you see the charging curve for the X-Pen G9. Remember that, okay, why the heck did I include the G9? It's a, a more expensive car. Well, but the new G6, which is roughly in the same price range as the Model Y and the Explorer or the MEB car, right? It charges way faster than the next gen Z6 and it's coming to Norway. It's, I think it's already out in China. It's coming to Norway later this year. So uh, it's starting way faster, but okay, we just have the, the best in here. Just, you know, to give you guys a, a clue of how fast the Chinese cars are charging. And then we have this line here. I didn't show it in the charging screen, but this is the Panasonic battery. Yeah, um, it was also tested many years ago. I think this was around 2022-ish. And you, look how flat it was, bam, you know, even flatter than the Ford Explorer, at least, uh, yeah, until there. And then the Explorer is flatter, but here we are, okay, so I need to explain here. The lowest line here, that's a 2021 LG battery. Yeah, the LG battery was introduced roughly in 20, uh, I think 2020 or something. Yeah, before that, Tesla used Panasonic batteries. But then at one point they started using the LG battery, possibly because they were cheaper, but they had poorer performance, charging performance. MC Hammer that I had, you know, Tesla Model 3 had this charging curve. It was insanely good. It was just a bit thirsty because it was before they introduced the octavalve and the heat pump. Um, but that here, okay, so interesting that this line here, the, the 2021, the, it got a speed bump at 2022. And you can see on the green line here, it kind of follows the the red line right except for that the red line here which is a uniper was tested three years later and there was no difference actually worse performance they have cut down the speed there and even a, a slight uh, drop here towards the end so it's like huh they upgraded it but then they de degraded it downgraded it for the 25 i don't know when the heck this happened but you see if tesla kept using the panasonic batteries the performance would be top notch and think about this that this happened this came out in 2019 already it was far ahead of the competitors and this line here that you see here the explorer this is more like 2024 that they came out with you know for the longest time, the MEB platform was roughly down here, charging at only 125 kilowatt in the beginning. So in a way, Tesla had a quite big lead of charging, but then they gave up this lead by using the LG batteries. So when, how can they come back in the lead? Well, hopefully if they can introduce the fat cells, but then, I don't know, they already have the fat cells or they're you know, in the Cybertruck and it's not performing that well. So I don't know, but I mean, for now, yes, um, the, the charging doesn't seem to be super impressive with Tesla, but it seems like Tesla, for some reason, in my test, in my 1000 kilometer challenges, they perform well, probably because they handshake quickly, they ramp up fast, uh, unlike other cars that kind of ramp up slow. Or there was one guy in the comment, he mentioned that his Taycan spends over two minutes handshaking. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, if you can charge quite fast to 80%, right, within 20 minutes, but you spend two extra minutes of handshake time, that is never mentioned, right, in the brochure. So that could explain why, for some reason, when I test Tesla in 1000 km channels, they still perform well, and probably because they have good efficiency. For, so for now, the Teslas, they can still survive in that race until the Chinese comes with a five, or 6C batteries, right? And then you yeah, the Europeans, well, you have, uh, uh, and you have a BMW, yeah, the new iX3, Neue Klasse, 400 kilowatt hour per hour, yeah. Okay, so then eventually I think once all the other car manufacturers, they charge way faster, they probably just give up trying to make the car efficient because it seems to be hard. Seems like Tesla is one of the only car manufacturers that still can master that technique. Even the Koreans kind of gave up on it. You guys remember the classic Ionic, right? Uh, but then they kind of gave up on it and then they just go for 
schnell charging instead. Yeah, it seems to be easier. But by the end of the day, okay, I'm not defending Tesla. I hope they will bring back Panasonic battery performance. But by the end of the day, um, the car, the EV you are charging, you're, it's not the freaking power bank. You charge it because you want to drive. And then if the car you're driving, which tend to be a Tesla, for example, uses less electricity, it means that it's cheaper for you. And also, uh, you don't just be blind on the kilowatt. You have to look at kilowatt versus watt hour per kilometer. And then the 1000 kilometer challenge seems to be a prime example of everything. The full stack test, not just a unit test. It tests everything, handshake time, ramp up time, efficiency, range, also the range on the first leg before you need to charge also matters. So for now, yes, Tesla is still in the game, but eventually I feel like they're gonna be overtaken. So that's gonna be for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.